Universal Brotherhood is a mind without barriers. Did you hear barrels? <laughs> barrels is part of the meaning, isn't it? It is. The, this is what the Australian called the, the bloody cough. I shouldn't. This is not being recorded, is it? Yes, it is. So, I'm sorry. So we we have to investigate this. We can we can have a nominal relationship to the concept of your universal brotherhood, which means merely intellectual or fuzzily emotional, but it doesn't change anything because of the next reaction. Universal Brotherhood is out of the window, and I'm after the fellow either with a chair, a laser, or my own aggravated words. That's not brotherhood. A mind without barriers becomes the source of transformative action. A mind that understands that erecting barriers between people between itself and others is not, not only a mistake, is a waste of energy. This mind then becomes the source of transformative action. Somebody pointed out to Dr. Besson that she had employed as a cook at Adyar a former convict. And this person, an European, was a bit, a bit shocked and Dr. Bezan said, yes, he has been with me for 25 years. And that speaks well for both of us. <laughs> <coughs> but the TS has rem remained vital also because of those members who even if they may not have react reached such depths, depths, they try to live to the best of their abilities a life of service and compassionate action. The life they put into the society strengthened and vitalized its body. I knew one such member in Sydney, and there are people here who knew her, Winfred Mackenzie. She touched so many lives. She changed so many lives. She was not a scholar. She was a real theosophist. The soul of the TS are the twin stars of universal brotherhood, sisterhood, and altruism. They shine constantly within the depths of the society's life, and they call us to a much deeper adventure, to leave self behind while meeting the other the wholeness of life in every form and under every appearance. The soul of the TS is a movement of aspiration towards union with the uncreated ground of being, which is life in its ineffable sacredness. Having visited a number of lodges in different countries, <coughs> sorry, one cannot help feeling this great reality, how the soul of the society is alive throughout the world. Sometimes, while visiting remote lodges in India, Brazil, and Indonesia, one felt that even if no talk was given and no outer event took place, just sitting in that hallowed environment was enough to fill this radiating presence of the TS soul. It is a profoundly benign, welcoming, and motherly presence. So what is the spirit of the TS then? The spirit of the TS is indefinable freedom, unconditioned consciousness, truth, and love immortal. It is the embodiment of resistless energy, which is goodness, benediction, and salvation. These are just my own words. It is the radical vision of a transformed humanity 
made whole by selfless action. In my poor view, it was this spirit that sustained the society during the several crises that shook its existence to its very core in the past. At this hallowed level, the TS is not just a human-made organization with a set of rules and organizing events and publishing books. The society's suarupa, that means its essential nature, is a pure vessel into which are constantly poured the waters of newness of life, wisdom and activity that have their source in those adept brothers who are the real founders of the Theosophical Society. Its spirit belongs to them and to their work. So if we try to understand a little bit more of the nature of the TS, its body, soul and spirit, the question could perhaps be asked, what is the voice of the Theosophical Society in the world today? How can the society speak to brutal selfishness in the world, to war, violence against women and children, to the daily genocide perpetrated on animals, to the relentless war against nature, to the fundamentalism in every religion? We have had a lineage of distinguished presidents, beginning with an American, Colonel Henry Steele Walcott, and recently electing another American, Tim Boyd, to lead the society in these troubled times. I'm not suggesting that we should wait for another 139 years to elect or re-elect another American as president. Mm -hmm. The president can travel, write articles, meet people, coordinate activities, and certainly expresses his view on current issues in the light of theosophy. He represents the society wherever he goes in an official capacity. He may voice his views on the several issues just listed above, views which we and the world listen to and ponder on. But is his voice but is the voice of the TS limited to his voice? One of the central concepts in the Vedanta tradition is Vah, speech. The Theosophical Glossary states that Vah is the mystic personification of speech and the female logos being one with Brahma who created her out of one half of his body. In one sense, Vah is speech by which knowledge was taught to men. In another, she is the mystic secret speech which dis descends upon and enters into the primeval rishis, as the tongues of fire are said to have set upon the apostles. For she is called the female creator, the mother of the Vedas. <clears throat> the real voice of the Theosophical Society comes from the integral unity of its body, soul, and spirit. And when we truly understand that we can find its voice, its inner speech, in the depths of our hearts, and then be able to address the questions that need to be addressed for the good of the world. Because we were meant to be an association of people from the beginning, a society, each one of us can be the voice of the TS and its life-transforming power. Not in the sense of speaking publicly on behalf of the society, as the president does, but carrying its profound spiritual power with us in complete humility and self-effacement. Annie Besant did precisely that when she wrote, Oh, if for one passing moment 
I could show to you by any skill of tongue or passion of emotion, one gleam of the faint glimpse that by the grace of the masters I have caught of the glory and the beauty of the life that knows no difference, no separation, then the, char the charm of that glory would so win your hearts that all earth's beauty would seem but ugliness, all earth's gold but dross, all earth's treasures but dust on the roadside beside the inexpressible joy of the life that knows itself as one. I have read that when she said, she said these things or similar things, she not only created a profound effect on the audience, but she multiplied the membership of the society. The society had barely 12,000 members when she took office as president. And it was during her presidency that the society reached the peak of 45,000. The Theosophical Society in its 140 years of existence has generated an awesome amount of educational resources. Much of these are now online, although much work still needs to be done in this direction. Lodges and sections of the society offer a variety of programs to the public and the members, some slightly broader than others by accommodating elements of New Age spirituality. The society lives and moves in the world, and the measure of its progress is directly related to its capacity of addressing the causes of suffering that have turned the world into a valley of shadows. The TS was not founded to bring a new ideology to the world, or to become an academic body solely occupied with the metaphysical questions, whether from the Eastern or the Western traditions. In the words of the Maha Chohan, a great adept, it's time that theosophy should enter the arena. Once Krishnamurti was asked, you say that, by someone, you say that if the individual is transformed, the, the world would be transformed. How do you know that that is true? Krishnaji replied, Sir, change and then see what happens. <laughs> I know that in this country and in Australia and other countries, we have some members that have a beef against Krishnamurti because he dissolved the order of the star in 1929. This is 2016. Can we get over it? <laughs> Let theosophy be our voice in the world. Let theosophy be our voice in the world. So that when, that we can open our hearts and minds and understand the words of the Mahatma. <coughs> poor, poor humanity. It reminds me of the old fable of the war between the body and its members. Here too, each limb of this huge orphan, fatherless and motherless, selfishly cares but for itself. The body uncared for suffers eternally, whether the limbs are at war or at rest. This was written in 1882. Is it much different from what is happening today? <coughs> In a visit to a Buddhist temple in Los Angeles a number of years ago, I had the opportunity of asking a Buddhist nun the meaning of the name Kwan In, whom HPB called the divine voice. She said the word Kwan means to hear, and explained that when we ordinarily hear the sufferings of the world, that hearing is mixed up with our own internal noises, emotions, and thoughts. But when Kwan hears the cries of the world, she does so from a state of complete emptiness. 
Her response then is compassion, infinite mercy. Compassion was the voice at the beginning of the Theosophical Society. Can we hear it? Thank you.